so we had <coughs> closed all the petition and reserved them for orders and the orders with regards to all the petitions will be pronounced today there are in total five petitions petition number one is filed by the Sharad Pawar faction through Shri Jain Patil against Shri Ajit Pawar and eight other MLAs of the Ajit Pawar faction. Petition number two is filed by the Ajit Pawar faction through Shri Anil Patil against Shri Jain Patil and Shri Jitendra Award of the Sharad Pawar faction. Petition number three is filed by Shri Sharad Pawar faction through Shri Jain Patil against Shri Narhari Jirwar and 19 other MLAs of the Ajit Pawar faction. Petition number four is filed by the Sharad Pawar faction through Shri Jitendra Award against Shri Chetan Tupe and 11 other MLAs of the Ajit Pawar faction. Petition number five is filed by the Ajit Pawar faction through Shri Anil Patil against Shri Anil Deshmukh and seven other MLAs of the Sharad Pawar faction. There are in total three petitions filed by the Sharad Pawar faction against the Ajit Pawar faction and two petitions filed by the Ajit Power faction against the Sharad Power faction. Filed by Shri Ajit Power faction against Shri Sharad Power faction. By order dated 16 January 2024, I had by consent of both the parties consolidated all the petitions into two groups. Petition <coughs> number 1, 3 and 4 filed by the Sharad Power faction uh, were grouped as group 1. And petition number two and five filed by the Ajit Power faction were grouped as group two. I would be pronouncing two separate judgments in these two groups. In the facts and circumstances of the matter and in view of the facts that the rival faction had emerged within the NCP prior to the initiation of disqualification petitions, I had to determine which faction was the real political party for the purpose of these disqualification petitions as per the law laid down by the Honorable Supreme Court in Subhash Desai matter. This issue is common in both the groups. So what I shall proceed to do is I shall first pronounce the order in group 1 where I shall first deal with the preliminary issue and then uh, deal with the issue with regards to disqualification. And then we'll follow with the second uh, petition, the uh, group. So, <clears throat> the Honorable Supreme Court in Subhash Desai versus Governor of Maharashtra, here and after referred to as Subhash Desai, was pleased to hold that the Speaker should prima facie determine who the real political party is for the purpose of adjudicating disqualification petitions. If two or more factions claim to be that political party, in keeping with the principles discussed in the said judgment, a bare perusal of the pleadings in the present matter indicate the emergence of two factions within the NCP, the Ajit Power faction and the Sharad Power faction. Although the said judgment was in the matter that arose from a somewhat similar political situation, that arose in the house concerning the Shiv Sena, it does not constitute, it does constitute a precedent that would apply on all four of the petition present disqualification matters as well. Hence, keeping in view the similar factual matrix and the law laid down by the Honorable Supreme Court in Subhash Desai Supra, I will prima facie determine which faction is the real political party for the purpose of adjudicating these disqualification petitions. The said preliminary determination, determination is necessary before examining the merits and deciding whether respondents have incurred disqualification under the 10th schedule of the Constitution of India. Therefore, to quote the preliminary issue that arises for my consideration before del del uh, delving into the merits of disqualification petition, under the 10th schedule is which among the two factions was the real NCP political party for the purpose of deciding the present disqualification petitions. The other issue framed for my consideration in this group of disqualification petitions is whether the respondents have incurred disqualification 
in terms of paragraph 21a of the 10th schedule of the constitution of india on account of their alleged acts omissions and or conduct so we'll go to the analysis observations and the findings with regards to which amongst the two faction is the real ncp political party for the purpose of deciding the present disqualification petition in view of the fact that in the present matter rival factions have emerged and both the factions claim to be the real political party read with the law laid down by the honorable supreme court in subhash desai supra stipulating that this forum should prima facie determine who the political party is for the purposes of adjudicating disqualification petitions if two or more factions claim to be that political party it is necessary to consider and determine the preliminary issue before examining the merits of these disqualification petitions principles laid down by the honorable supreme court in supash desai relevant for the purpose of determining who the political party is i am not reading out all the contents of the subhash desai which we have referred to and relied upon i will straight away go to my observations thus what emerges from the principles laid down by the honorable apex court is that the question of who the real political party is has to be considered and determined after giving due weightage to one the constitution of the political party two the leadership structure of the party and three the legislative majority if two or more factions claim to be the real political party the question as to who the real political party is is here and after referred to as the preliminary issue since in these proceedings both the factions are claiming to be the real political party at the relevant point of time and as the said issue arose for determination in these proceedings on 16 january 2024 the said preliminary issue was also framed as one of the issues in these disqualification petitions thereby affording an opportunity to the parties to make their submissions on this point i proceed to consider and adjudicate on this i would be adjudicating the said preliminary issue based on one the principles laid down by the honorable apex court two record available with the maharashtra legislature secretariat and three submissions made and documents referred to by the parties during the course of the hearing in these disqualification petitions petitioner submissions on the preliminary issue i am not going to go into uh, reading those submissions again they are a part of my order which you can refer to there are also observations with regards to the respondent submissions on the preliminary issue which also are there in my order which i wouldn't be reading out at this point of time analysis observations and conclusions on the preliminary issue as recorded earlier the decision of the preliminary issue has to be taken after a careful analysis of one the constitution of the ncp to the leadership structure of ncp and three the legislative majority after having heard both the sides on the above aspects i now propose to pro proceed to record my observations and findings on the preliminary issue in the present matter there is no dispute as to the relevant ncp constitution both the parties have placed reliance on the constitution and rules annexed as annexed r1 and r2 to the reply filed by the respondents the said constitution of the ncp and rules are here and after referred to as the ncp constitution and ncp rules on 30th june 2023 a resolution was passed by 41 legislators of the ncp electing shri ajit pawar as the president of ncp a dispute under paragraph 15 of the symbol order was also preferred by the ajit pawar faction before the election commission of india sharad pawar faction objected to the resolution dated 30th june 2023 and executed affidavits in support of the leadership of shri sharad pawar which were filed before the election commission of india thus it is abundantly clear that two rival factions had emerged in the ncp on 30th june 2023 itself hence the relevant date on which two factions emerged in ncp is 30th june 2023 as rec <coughs> as recorded earlier there is no dispute about the relevant constitution of the party thus the said ncp constitution is taken into account for identifying the leadership structure of the ncp since there is no factual consensus on what or who constitutes the relevant leadership structure 
which has to be taken into consideration. It is necessary to peruse the NCP constitution so as to identify the leadership structure provided for, for in the constitution and consequently examine the leadership structure put forth by both the sides. Article 5 of the NCP constitution read with NCP rules provides for a vertical organizational structure which consists of unit committee, city division committee, area committee, town committee, panchayat committee, constituency committee, district committee, regional committee, union territory committee, state committee, working committee and national committee. Each committee at the bottom level acts as the feeder cadre for electing the next immediate higher committee. Article 12 of the NCB constitution provides that the state committee shall consist of delegates elected from the constituency block committee. Further, NCP constitution provides that all members of the state committee shall be delegates entitled to vote in the election of the president. National committee of the NCP consists of one-tenth of delegates, the president, the ex-president of the party who have completed a term of 365 days and, cons and continued to be an active member. State presidents of the NCP, leader of the NCP legislative parties and other 15 members elected among, amongst the members of parliament. Article 21 of the NCP constitution read with NCP rules provides that the highest executive authority of the NCP is NCP working committee which consists of the president of the party, leader of the party in parliament and 23 other members of whom 12 members are elected by the national committee and the rest are appointed by the president. The said article 21 further provides that the highest executive authority of the party i.e. the NCP national working committee shall have the power to carry out the policies and programs laid down by the party and it shall be the final authority in all matters regarding interpretation and application of the provisions of the NCP constitution. The NCP constitution read with the NCP rules provides that the president shall preside over national convention, national committee and working committee and shall have overall control of the working of the party. It further provides that any decision connected with policy matters or on other important political issues will be announced by the president and nobody shall be open and nobody shall openly question or challenge any such decision or statement. Thus, what emerges from the above is that the leadership structure of the NCP consists of 1. The President of the NCP, 2. The Working Committee and 3. The National Committee where the President and the Working Committee are the decision-making ent entities of the NCP. Thus, the leadership structure of the NCP with reference to the President and the Working Committee are the relevant entities for the determination of the preliminary issue. Accordingly, according to the petitioner, again leadership structure relied to on by the petitioner is a matter of record which I am not reading out again. According to the petitioner, a valid leadership structure in consonance with the NCP constitution exists as is evident from the letter dated 15 September 2022 issued by Sri T.P. Pitambaram Master addressed to the Election Commission intimating details of organizational elections held in the year 2022 and 2. The internal NCP correspondence by way of notification dated 15 September 2022 issued by Sri Praful Patel intimating the national office bearers, working committee members, state union territory presidents, etc. Petitioner preliminary primarily relies on these two documents to establish the existence of a valid leadership structure and further submits that the Sharat Power faction had the majority within the said leadership structure based on the reasonings which are a matter of record. The respondent, however, countered this leadership structure on the grounds that the said leadership structure cannot be taken into account as the said leadership structure came into existence without following the due process of election appointment as provided in the NCP constitution. In this regard, the respondent made the following submissions, which is again matter of record.
even though the preliminary submissions of the respondent on the leadership structure is that no leadership structure exists with can be a basis for rendering any finding on the preliminary issue the respondents in the alternative relied on the resolution dated 30th june 2023 whereby shri ajit pawar was elected as the president of the ncp relying on the resolution the respondent submitted that the constituent members of the leadership structure were changed by electing shri ajit pawar as the president of the party and if any leadership structure must be considered then it must be in which shri ajit pawar is the president the petitioner disputed the aforesaid claim by submitting that the alleged event of 30th june 2022 as claimed by the respondent are inherently improbable and the election of shri ajit pawar was not in accordance with the procedure prescribed by the ncp constitutions findings and conclusion at the very outset i wish to make certain observations even though both the parties have submitted probably owing to the tenor of the observations of the honorable supreme court that preliminary issue has to be decided on a prima facie assessment of material on record in fact both the parties have contrary to their own submissions led extensive evidence to buttress their respective arguments with facts in respect of the relevant leadership structure be that as it may i am not inclined to diverge from the honorable supreme court's directives to consider evidence of both parties in respect of validity and or illegality of organizational stroke leadership structure in in which it was this position of prima facie assessment that i adopted in my final order dated 10 january 2023 when i proceeded to decide the disqualification petition number 1 to 16 of 2022 the shiv sena disqualification matter where i have already held that jurisdiction under the 10th schedule only mandates a prima facie adjudication as to what leadership structure of the political party was at the relevant time and it does not extend to an inquiry as to whether or not leadership structure was pursuant to a validly held election it is a matter of fact that till 29 june 2023 there has been no contemporaneous challenge to the leadership of shri sharad pawar as the party president however the said position was sought to be altered by the ajit pawar faction by way of the resolution dated 30th june 2023 thus prima facie as on 30th june 2023 there existed two parallel claims in respect of the ncp leadership the one according to the petitioner claiming shri sharad pawar is the party president and the other one claimed by the respondents where shri ajit pawar is the party president in order to try and demonstrate that their separate claims to the leadership of the party by their respective presidents both the parties have led oral and documentary evidence and argued exhaustively both the parties claim that it is their leader who was validly elected according to the ncp constitution and the claim of the other side therefore cannot be entertained furthermore both parties claim that other side's claim as to the leader's election as the party president was not according accordance with the ncp constitution as noted earlier under the 10th schedule while deciding the preliminary issue i cannot get, go into the validity and or legality of elections to the leadership i am therefore confronted with the rival assertions which clearly indicate the existence of two persons claiming leadership of the party it is to be noted at this juncture that the respondent number 1 to 9 of petition number 1 of 2023 joined the government on 2nd july 2023 the resolution electing shri ajit pawar came to be passed on 30th june 2023 this leads to a peculiar situation where there are seen to exist two parallel leadership structures and two party presidents prior to the alleged conduct attracting disqualification undoubtedly the rival parties have tried to lead evidence to justify their opposing stand about the validity of the election of their leader to the post of president they have tried to show how their separate processes of election were justified by the ncb constitution i am not inclined to go into their evidence or appreciate 
their evidence based arguments because this would lead <coughs> this would lead deciding whether the rival elections were in keeping with the constitution and the rules and whether factually shri sharad pawar or shri ajit pawar were validly elected or whether in fact shri sharad pawar had resigned at the relevant time i possess no jurisdiction to issue any such de declaratory orders in the absence of such jurisdiction which is certainly not available under the 10th schedule of the constitution or the wherewithal to examine the correctness validity and legality of parallel claims of valid stroke legal elections i need not and cannot undertake such an inquiry thus for this reason alone relying on the test of organizational stroke stroke leadership structure to examine the two parallel rival claims in respect of the leadership about the post of party president president i cannot arrive at even a prima facie decision on the preliminary issue irrespective of my finding here and about it if the leadership structure relied on the peti, uh, uh, on by the petitioner is looked at even for ascertaining the prima facie position it is seen that it cannot form the basis for determining the preliminary issue for the following reasons the petitioner's reliance on majority in ncp working committee cannot be taken into account for determining the preliminary issue as the composition of the ncp working committee relied by the petitioner is not in conformity with the ncp constitution article 21 of the ncp constitution read with ncp rules provides that the highest executive authority of the ncp is ncp working committee which consists of one the president of the party two leader of the party in parliament and three 23 other members of whom 12 members are elected by the national committee and rest are appointed by the president a perusal of the documents relied on by the petitioner to show the composition of the ncp working committee indicates that the ncp working committee had 28 members whereas the ncp constitution provides for only maximum 25 members the said document shows 16 permanent invitees whereas the ncp constitution does not provide for any permanent invitees the petitioners the petitioner submitted that in the national committee sharad pawar faction enjoyed the majority support amongst the delegates elected from the state committees however the petitioner has not provided any document which reflects the election of such delegates thus in the absence of any record reflecting the election result and names of delegates the said claim cannot be accepted by blindly appreciating it to be true thus the submission of the petitioner that sharad pawar faction enjoyed majority support in the national committee cannot be relied upon to determine organizational majority support of the president and or will of the president is not a reliable factor to determine the preliminary issue as both the factions challenges their respective leaders claiming that the leader was not validly elected as held earlier under the 10th schedule such claims cannot be adjudicated it was open for both the parties to have initiated appropriate proceedings to get a declaration to that effect in the absence of such proceedings or any findings thereon by a competent authority both the factions cannot equally claim that the rival faction leader was validly and or not validly elected thus for reasons recorded here and above i hold that leadership structure relied on by the petitioner and or respondents cannot be taken into account for determining the preliminary issue as it would be an impossible attempt legislative majority considered as recorded earlier the honorable supreme court in subhas desai supra has held that the question of who the real political party is has to be considered and determined after giving due weightage to one the ncp constitution to the leadership structure of the party and three legislative majority if two or if two or factions claiming to be the real political party having arrived at the conclusion that leadership structure and or organizational structure does not provide a reasonable outcome to settle the issue of which faction is the real political party i now turn to the test of 
to test or mechanism that exist based on the leg, uh, legislative majority before delving further the petitioner submission that legislative majority cannot at all be taken into consideration has to be considered the petitioner has placed reliance on paragraph 102 to 111 of subhash desai supra in support of this submission however a careful reading of subhash desai supra shows that the said submission is misplaced paragraph 102 to 111 of subhash desai supra deals with the issue of who appoints the leader and the whip of the party in house in the said regard it was held by the honorable supreme court that it is not the legislature party but the political party which appoints the whip and the leader in the house the ratio cannot be read to mean that the legislative majority cannot be cannot at all be considered while determining the preliminary issue in paragraph 168 of the subhash desai supra the honorable supreme court has in clear terms laid down that for the purpose of disqualification petition the speaker while deciding the issue of real political party has to take into consideration the leadership structure specified and identifiable from the constitution of the party along with the legislative assembly majority the only rider provided is in the said paragraph 168 was that determination of who the real political party is must not be based on a blind appreciation of legislative majority this is only a rider provided so as to make it clear that even the leadership structure outside the legislative assembly is also a relevant factor in the determination of who the real political party is it also indicates the legislative majority it it also indicates that legislative majority is also a factor that is not prohibited from consideration thus the submissions of the petitioner that legislative majority cannot be taken as a factor in arriving at a decision on the preliminary issue is not correct and hence rejected needless to mention that it is well settled by supreme court that where the question arises as to which group is the party strength of each group becomes an important and relevant factor it is thus obvious why the legislative majority becomes relevant creation to be taken into account to decide which faction is the real political party in the present matter the legislative majority is undisputed the respondents claim that ajit pawar faction had the support of 41 out of 53 mlas is not disputed by the petitioners even otherwise the resolution dated 30th june 2022 passed by the ajit pawar faction shows that prior to joining the government ajit pawar faction outnumbered the sharad pawar faction it is also imperative to note that the very fact that the Sharad Power faction has filed disqualification petitions against 41 MLAs of the Ajit Power faction itself indicates the numerical strength of each faction. Further, the respondents' assertion that they have majority in the Legislative Assembly of Maharashtra, Legislative Council of Maharashtra and Legislative Assembly of Nagaland has not been disputed by the petitioners. It is clear, it is made clear at this juncture that affidavits annexed by the respondents to the affidavit in lieu of examination in chief of Sri Anil Bhaidas Patil RW2 was not taken on record and thus not relied upon for my finding that prima facie Ajit Power faction had the legislative support. The respondents assertion that even the vote share secured by the legislators supporting the Ajit Power faction is sustainably large then the legislators supporting the Sharad Power faction is also not disputed by the petitioners. It is, to, it is to be also noted that the petitioner has not claimed legislative majority in the manner and has not even attempted to demonstrate it. Thus, in view of the above, I hold that preliminary issue as to which faction is the real political party is discernible from the legislative majority which existed when the rival factions emerged. Further, I hold that the Ajit Power faction had an overwhelming legislative majority when the rival factions emerged. Final conclusions on the preliminary issue. Thus, in view of my findings that the party constitution and leadership structure, organizational structure does not provide any reliable outcome 
to the question which faction is the real NCP political party and consequently these cannot be yardsticks to determine which faction is the real political party and to the legislative majority provides a clear and reliable answer to the question of which faction is the real NCP political party. I hold that the Ajit Pawar faction is the real NCP political party for the purposes of these disqualification petitions. Issue number two, have the respondents incurred disqualification in terms of paragraph 21A of the 10th schedule for the of the constitution on account of their acts, omissions and or conduct. Now with regards to the second issue, it's common again to the extent of the contents to group 1 and group 2. However, considering the importance of this issue, I may read it out in the second order as well, second group as well, even at the cost of repetition. The petitioner has concluded, <coughs> the petitioner has contended that the respondents are liable to be disqualified on the following grounds. The respondents have gone against the official position of the NCP political party and joined hands with Eknath Shinde BJP government in Maharashtra on 2nd July 2023. The respondents have taken oath as ministers in the Eknath Shinde BJP government in Maharashtra on 2nd July 2023. Unilaterally and without authority, the respondents declared Sri Ajit Pawar as the president of the NCP on 30th June 2023. Unilaterally and without authority, the respondents declared Sri Ajit Pawar as the leader of the legislature party in the Maharashtra State Legislative Assembly on 30th June 2023. The respondents attempted to, con to continue uh, a chief whip who had been removed as a member of the NCP for indulging in anti-party activities. The respondents attempted to create confusion by opening party office without authority. Without any authority, the respondents called an open national convention on 5th July 2023 to ratify the illegal decisions on 30th June 2023. The respondents tendered affidavits in support of Sri Ajit Pawar's anti-party activities. The principal ground on which the disqualification is sought is that by joining the government on 2nd June 2023, the respondent number 1 to 9 is <coughs> in disqualification petition number 1 of 2023 and by supporting the said action of respondent number one of uh, to nine the other respondents in disqualification petition number three and four of 2023 have gone against the will of the ncp political party and thereby incurred disqualification under paragraph 21a of the 10th schedule of the constitution all other grounds are allied grounds arising out of the said principal grounds in view of my finding that the Ajit Pawar faction was the real political party when the rival factions emerged within the NCP, respondents cannot be held to be disqualified on any of these grounds as the decision of Ajit Pawar faction constituted the will of NCP political party. Consequently, the disqualification petition number 1, 3 and 4 of 2023 are liable to be dismissed. In view of my findings, that Ajit Pawar faction was the real NCP political party when the rival factions emerged, the respondents cannot be held to be disqualified for grounds recorded in paragraph 76A and B. Even otherwise, irrespective of my conclusions about which faction was the real political party, for the reasons recorded here and above, here and below, the respondents cannot be held to be disqualified on the grounds recorded in paragraph 76. Irrespective of my conclusions, on the real political party, in my consider considered opinion, none of the averments, contentions or pleadings raised by the petitioner, especially ground C to H, recorded in paragraph 76 here and above, fall within the ambit of paragraph 21A of the 10th schedule of the constitution. It is necessary to understand the scope and object of the said provisions of the 10th schedule of the constitution. The object underlying the said provision was to curb the evil of political defection motivated by various considerations which endanger which endanger the foundations of our democracy. What is to be noted is that 10th schedule is intended only for the purpose of prohibiting and punishing defections 
and that too with the objective of preserving the foundations of democracy. I am pained to observe that in the present matter, what the f when the facts, circumstances and evidence are viewed, the misuse of the provisions of 10th schedule by political parties becomes apparent. It appears that the initiation of the proceedings is not to prevent maverick and irresponsible defection or to call an errant member to book. It is to suppress dissent within the party and open a new direction in the political tussle for power. The attempt is to stretch the provisions of 10th schedule to suit private objectives of individuals or parties rather than prevent the harm that is caused to elective democracy itself. In the facts and circumstances brought before me, it is necessary to consider the cardinal question, does every act of a member of the legislature that may be described as defiance or dissent or behavior of group of members of the legislative party in the house that goes against some other group within their own party falls within the meaning of the term defection under paragraph 2 of the 10th schedule. As the speaker and even as the elected representative, as an elected representative, I witness the daily churning of politics as it plays out before me. I see members, their political leaders and their parties as if through a kaleidoscope, making and breaking into new forms, forging new alliances, undoing old relationships, striking out in unknown directions. This is in the very nature of politics and as we see it unfolding before our eyes. It is the reality of politics today. Surely every such action cannot qualify as defection within the meaning of the 10th schedule. The constitutional bench in the case of Kyoto Holoan versus Zuchilu and others has somewhat touched upon these aspects. I have referred to Kyoto and how Kyoto has dealt with these issues. Then, would every act of defiance or dissent or behavior of groups of members that goes against some other group within their political party fall within the meaning of the term defection under paragraph 2 of the 10th schedule? The question, no doubt, is foundational, but by no means is it the only question that arises for consideration. The companion question that arises is equally fundamental. Is, is the 10th schedule a tool to control opposition within the political rank of the party? Assuming that rightly or wrongly the behavior of the acts of the respondent in these groups of petitions of raising their voice against Sri Sharad Pawar and disobeying the dictates of Sri Sharad Pawar amounts to indiscipline, could such action amount to members having voluntarily giving up membership of the party, thereby attracting disqualification under the 10th schedule. The event that unfolded between 30th June 2022 and 2nd July 2022 were clearly in the nature of intra-party dissent within the Nationalist Congress party and the members of the party stood divided between two leaders, i.e. Sri Sharad Pawar and Sri Ajit Pawar. But this conflict was clearly within the political party. Questioning the decision of Sri Sharad Pawar and going against his wishes cannot be said to be an act of defection or of leaving the party. It is a dissent expressed by the members of the NCP. At no point of time did any of the leaders, including the respondents, ever made any attempt that would amount to a statement or contention to leave the NCP political party. Members of the party expressing concerns against certain political behavior of other members of the party would not constitute defection. Under the 10th schedule, such collective dissent would remain to be a dissent within the political party. Even when it began to be raised publicly, on the platform other than party forums. It may not be to the, killing, to the liking of this leader or that, but it would still remain
to be a descent and not desertion a word about descent intra party descent by individual members of a political party need to be distinguished from collective descent of a group in the legislature legislative party it further needs to be established that if such collective descent has occurred it amounts to defection from the party your an examination of the motive also becomes relevant i need to decide whether collective descent against the party leadership can be termed as honest descent within the political party permissible in a democratic institution such as the political party further whatever be the nature of the descent can it be given the status and character of descent within the legislature par legislative party which alone is a descent on which the speaker is empowered to act under the 10th schedule a useful reference may be made to the recent judgment of the honorable supreme court in the case of balchandra l jarki holi and others versus b s yedurappa and others reported in 2011 7 scc 1 it is an interesting case which had come up before the honorable supreme court from state of karnataka and touches upon this aspect the fact of the case, said case were 13 mlas of bjp and two other independent mlas wrote to the honorable governor indicating that as mlas of bjp they had become disillusioned with the functioning of the government headed by chief minister and also the leader of the legislature party who belong to their own party after stating their reasons they added that they that they were withdrawing support to the bjp government headed by mr b s yedurappa but they would support bjp government with any other leader with uh, any other leader from bjp in its place on the basis of the said letters governor asked the bjp chief minister to seek vote of confidence in the legislative assembly and also intimated this to the speaker on the same day itself the chief minister filed disqualification petitions against his own mlas accusing them of voluntarily giving up membership of the political party upon issuance of show cause notice the mlas filed a reply stating that they did not intend to withdraw support to bjp but had withdrawn support only from the government headed by shri yedurappa and that they would support any bjp government headed by a clean and efficient person they asserted that their conduct did not fall within the scope of paragraph 21a of the 10th schedule the speaker however disqualified the mlas under paragraph 21a of the 10th schedule the speaker's decision was challenged before the divisional bench of karnataka high court the division bench comprising of honorable chief justice and justice n kumar gave differing judgments the honorable chief justice rejected all the contentions of the mlas and dismissed the writ petitions while justice n kumar in his separate judgment deferred the <coughs> deferred with the views of the honorable chief justice in regards to interpretation of paragraph 21a of the 10th schedule and set aside the speaker's order the matter was then referred to the th to, to a third judge who in turn concurred with the judgment of the honorable chief justice thus by a majority it was held that speaker had rightly disqualified bjp mlas the order of the speaker and the judgment of the high court was challenged before the honorable supreme court in its judgment the honorable supreme court extensively referred to the uh, referred to with approval the observations made by the deserting judge of the karnataka high court justice n kumar i am in complete agreement with this view and i am bound by it i reproduce the said paragraph which are relevant for the present purpose justice n kumar who along with the chief justice heard writ petitions filed by the appellant herein in his separate judgment deferred with the views expressed by the chief justice in regards to the interpretation of paragraph 21a of the 10th schedule of the constitution the learned judge went on to further hold that when a member of a house expressed his no confidence in the leader of a legislative party and if he happened to be the chief minister who is heading the council of ministers and had written to the governor in that regard such act by itself would not amount to an act of floor crossing similarly 
if the governor after taking note of the expression of no confidence was satisfied that the chief minister had lost majority support in the house he could call upon the chief minister to prove his majority on the floor of the house it was further observed that if the chief minister on such request failed to establish that he enjoyed the support of the majority of the members the ministry would fall but such an act of the member of the house would not constitute defection under 10th schedule by such an act the political party which had formed the government would not lose its right to form a government again on the other hand what is disturbed by on the other hand what is disturbed by such such an act is the government of the political party with a particular leader in whom the members of the house belonging to the same political party have no confidence but this would not mean that the member of the political party to which the chief minister belonged had given up his membership to the political part of the political party having dealt with the various decisions referred to here and above the the learned judge came to the conclusion that it was clear that an act of no confidence in the in the leader of the legislative party does not amount to his voluntarily giving up membership of the political party similarly his act of expressing no confidence in the government formed by the the party with a particular leader as the chief minister would not also amount to a voluntary act of giving up the membership of that political party the learned judge further observed that deserting the leader and deserting the government is not synonymous with deserting the party if a member resigned from the ministry it would not amount to defection what constitute defection under paragraph 21a of the 10th schedule is deserting the party the learned judge observed that dissent is not defection and the 10th schedule while recognizing dissent prohibits defection in this background on an appreciation of facts on record i find that the present petition do not attract or justify actions under the 10th schedule in my view the petitioner cannot and should not use the provisions of 10th schedule as a weapon to silence or browbeat the members or to crush opposition that would be a complete abuse of the process of law and would run counter to the constitutional intent behind the 10th schedule it also underlines the instance of the election commission of india to bring about changes in the party constitution to make it more democratic by providing party cadre a platform to express themselves and give them a voice in the party's decision making it may be <clears throat> it may be that some members go overboard and make some statements or do some acts which may be in breach of party discipline it would be for the political party to deal with them appropriately and not for the 10th schedule looking at the degree or gravity of the indiscipline the concerned members may be censured admonished or reprimanded or given a more extreme punishment such as suspension or expulsion from the party as may be warranted by the party's rules even the most extreme punishment of expulsion from the party would not have the effect of these members losing their seat in the house the members would remain as unattached members in the house continuing to represent their constituencies and they would still continue to be members of the political party for the purpose of 10th schedule the 10th schedule is not intended to be used as a device for imposing inter party discipline much less for ad administering the party no party leadership can use the provisions of 10th schedule as a deterrent to stifle the collective dissent of large number of members by threatening them with disqualification under the 10th schedule in a given case when a tussle for leadership arises between leaders in a political party the elected members as intended as indeed the common party workers usually cannot remain mute on lookers they are compelled to choose sides 
whatever else may be the consequences of their action or inaction, the parties cannot expect that the Speaker's office be used to eradicate opposition or quell dissent in party ranks by employing the mechanism of the 10 schedule. 10 schedule can only enter the arena if members voluntarily give up membership of the party. As things stand, the Speaker has no role to play in the game of political tussle between warring party leaders. The Speaker's action of imposing penal consequences is prompted by the letter of the law or, or spirit behind the 10th schedule, which in my considered view is to preserve the democratic foundations of legislatures or the parliament. The Speaker must keep in mind this objective underlying the 10th schedule and see if the indiscipline falls within the provisions of paragraph 21A of the 10th schedule. The Speaker must guard against the power under the 10th schedule from being invoked with ulterior motives for party gains. Thus, for the reasons stated above, respondents cannot be held to be disqualified on any of the grounds recorded in paragraph 76 C to H as they do not amount to voluntarily giving up membership of the political party. Consequently, the disqualification petition number 1, 3 and 4 of 2023 are liable to be dismissed. In view of my con conclusions and findings recorded here and above, petition number 1, 3 and 4 of 2023 are hereby dismissed. shall now deal with the second group of petitions being so petition number 2 and 5 filed by the ajit pawar factions have been grouped as group 2 really pronouncing the order for those petitions filed by the Ajit Power faction against the members belonging to the Sharad Power faction. The preliminary issue has already been decided which is similar in both the groups and I have already ruled on that and read out the relevant portions of the order which deal with that issue. Now with regards to have respondents incurred disqualification in terms of paragraph 21A of the 10th schedule of the constitution on account of their acts, omissions and or conduct. So this is the respondents as in the Sharad Power faction MLAs, whether through their acts and conducts do they qualify for disqualification under 21A. Petitioner has contended that the respondents are liable to be disqualified on the following grounds. A. Tendered affidavits in support of Sri Sharad Power without seeking permission of party president Shri Ajit Pawar, respondents by making statements against the decision of the party to join the government has committed anti-party activities and have thus voluntarily given up the membership of the party. In my considered opinion, irrespective of my decision that the Ajit Pawar faction was a real NCB political party when the rival factions emerged, none of the government's contentions or pleadings raised by the petitioner in this group of petition shall fall within the ambit of paragraph 21A of the 10th schedule of the constitution. The object underlying the provisions in the 10th schedule was to curb the evil of political defections motivated by various considerations which endanger the foundations of our democracy. What is to be noted is that the provisions of the amendment are intended only for the purpose of prohibiting and punishing defection and that to, with the objective of preserving the foundation of democracy. The rest of them are, my observations are same with regards to the distinction between dissent and defection.
have again quoted the and justice n kumar's observations and the supreme court's observation with regards to the issue with regards to dissent and defection we've dealt with that in the previous order as well so i'll read out only the operative portion of this thus for the reasons stated here above respondents cannot be held to be disqualified on any of the grounds as they do not amount to voluntarily giving up membership of the political party consequently the disqualification petition number 2 and 5 of 2023 are liable to be dismissed in view of my conclusions and findings recorded here and above petition number 2 and 5 of 2023 are hereby dismissed you all can apply for a certified copy and the certified copy will be provided to you